Strings are often the backbone of a cinematic piece of music. As knowing how to create musically rich and lush string parts will immediately help to elevate your music. So in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to take a simple eight bar piano melody with chords like this and orchestrate it for strings like this. Now there are of course various approaches you could take for arranging for strings. This is one way you could do it though for a simple eight bar melody. Start by giving the first violins the melody. I'm going to transpose the notes up an octave from my original piano sketch, which will help leave room for the other string parts underneath. When dealing with long string samples, programming in MIDI CC data is essential to adding musicality. Here I am using both expression, MIDI CC11, and modulation, CC1, with these rises and falls every couple of bars to add some expressiveness to the sound. If you're using a legato patch for a smooth transition between consecutive notes, make sure your MIDI notes overlap slightly, which will trigger the legato transitions in your sample library. Here I'm using the first violin's legato patch from Cinematic Studio Strings, but for some extra definition, I'm also going to lay in the violin legato patch from Performance Sample's Pacific Strings. Next, it's time to focus on the accompanying parts. Starting with the basses, give them the root note of each chord. You could also try experimenting with adding the odd inversion, changing a note from a root to the third or fifth note of each chord. Rhythm wise, I've opted to keep it simple by giving them held whole notes, each lasting a bar. Note that basses are transposing instruments, and so sound an octave lower than written here. Next, let's work our way up and add the cello part. Now we have the basses covering the all important bass line. So I'm going to use the celli to help further outline the chords, whilst providing some movement in the accompanying parts as well. I'm actually going to split the eight bars into two halves. For the first four bars, you could consider starting with a legato line. The first chord I have is G minor, giving me the notes of G, B flat, and D to use. Have a go at spreading the notes so they outline an open voicing of the chord. So here I've used G, the root, the D, the fifth above, then B flat, up another sixth. To add some extra rhythm, you could also add another note like I've done here, the G, which helps to bridge the gap in preparation for the root note of the next chord in the following bar. So next I'll do the same as the previous bar, but using the notes found in E flat major, with the E flat on the bottom, then the B flat, and then the G on top. For some variation, you could alter the rhythm, like adding an extra quarter note, like I've done here. I then use the same rhythm for the following two bars. To thicken the overall string texture for the last four bars, I've then decided to change the part, opting now to divide the cellos into three with open voiced chords. Again, to achieve some more definition from the samples, I'm also going to lay in both the cello legato and whisper sustains, from Pacific Strings to the two parts as well. Let's take a listen to the orchestration with the first violins and basses added as well.
Positioned in the middle of a string section, both physically and within the frequency spectrum, violas can be very useful at providing inner harmony. I will often use them to further flesh out a chord, while also providing added movement to the overall accompaniment. This can easily be achieved by, say, having them alternate between two notes which are found in a given chord. So here for the first bar, I have them rocking back and forth between a D and B flat, both notes, of course, found in a G minor chord. For the second bar, I then move the D up to an E flat, giving two notes found in the E flat major chord, E flat and B flat. Before carrying on in a similar fashion for the rest of the eight bars. I've also added some staccato samples using the same notes as a separate layer underneath in order to achieve a little more attack from the main legato viola line. It's very subtle, but here is the line with and without the staccato samples added. For the violas, I'm using Cinematic Strings 2 instead of Cinematic Studio Strings, as I find the legato a little easier to control. Finally, we come to the second violins. The seconds can have various roles, but for this arrangement, I am mainly going to have them playing the melody, the same as the first violins, but down an octave. This will help to add extra weight to the melody, especially as I have various moving parts in the violas and cello. I've also given them an extra role though, by adding two smaller counter melodies, while the main melody in the first violins are taking a breather. So here in bar four, where the first violins are playing a whole note on E flat, I have the seconds rise up an octave to the same E flat, before descending through to D and then C. This almost acts like an answer in response to the previous two bars of the melody. The D especially helps to create some dissonance between the two violin parts, clashing with the high E flat in the first violins. Dissonance and then the resolution of the tension is where extra emotion can be created within music, so don't be afraid to experiment with it in your own writing. I then added another counter melody during bar 6, this time an ascending pattern moving up by step. Let's take a listen to the whole eight bars. And now as promised, let's hear the same arrangement using only the BBC Discover library. We've only briefly touched upon using dynamics to help ensure your orchestral string samples do justice to your arrangement. If you feel your mock-up needs that little bit of polishing, make sure to watch this video, which goes into more detail about how to make your samples sound a little more lifelike. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.